So welcome back everyone to Finding Forex. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys the perfect phone strategy. And normally when you're using your phone, you've only just started your trading journey. So you need to keep everything simple. I'm gonna be giving you tips. I'm gonna be giving you a method. I'm gonna be showing you how I've done it in the past to make some money inside the market. So without further ado, let's jump into the video. So this video was actually meant to be out like two weeks ago. But at the end of this video, I have some outtakes of that video. I didn't have my cameraman because, well, my girlfriend, because she was working. And it was very, very off the cuff. And you'll see at the end of it how bad it was. There was even a sock involved. It was that bad. But before we get into the actual video, if you guys are new, make sure you're subscribing to the channel because not only will I be teaching you guys how to trade absolutely for free, but I'm also doing a hundred pounds giveaway. If you want to enter that, all you're gonna have to do is subscribe to the channel and then leave a like on this video. I would also just like to point out that I actually have plenty of experience from trading from my phone. If you look at these big YouTubers, they'll do one-off videos talking about how they can use this insane strategy on their phones and it can make you thousands and thousands and thousands. And no disrespect to them, but I genuinely have experience. Before I started trading off my laptop and iPad, all I used to trade solely from was my phone. So I have plenty of experience to help you guys make some money. So the first tip that I'm going to be giving to you guys is download Trading View. So if you're trading from MetaTrader 4 with Forex, or you're even doing stocks, this is by far the best thing to go with. Because if you're trading with MetaTrader 4, you're very restricted in how you can look at the markets, in the instruments that you can use inside those markets. So a good start to helping you guys make some money trading from your phone would be to download Trading View. So another great tip is to actually turn your phone onto landscape mode. Now I'll be getting onto the strategy and everything that you need for the strategy in a second, but this is a huge part of the video that not a lot of people actually talk about like downloading trading view, always having your phone on landscape mode. These little attention to details is what can make and break you, what can be the making money and what could be you losing money. So when you turn your phone onto landscape, it can give you a much broader picture of what is going on in the markets. Not only can you see more candles before, but if you're setting a stop loss and your phone is on portrait mode, your stop loss could seem like this fucking big, but really that's like 10 pips. So you're thinking you need to tighten your stop loss because your phone's on portrait mode, when actually if you just turned it to landscape mode, your stop loss would have gone from about this big to about this big. So it's all about perspective. If you see that where your entry point is on your phone, and then you see your stop loss is all the way down here from your entry, but it's only 10 or 15 pips, you think you'll need to change that stop loss because it's way too wide. But had you turned it onto landscape mode, it would have been really about that wide. So you always want to make sure that you're changing your phone onto landscape mode because it can give you a much broader, much better perspective of what is going on inside the markets. So my last tip before we get onto all the strategy is to keep everything simple. Because you're on a phone, everything is so much smaller. So keeping everything simple, not only as a beginner, but trading off your phone is an absolute must. If you've got 10 different instruments, like you've got RSIs, you've got moving averages, you've got Bollinger Bands, you've got your Fibonacci retracements. If you've got all of those things all at once, not only with all of that, but your support and resistance as well, your screen is going to be too cluttered and you're not going to know whether you should buy or sell. Had all of those been gone and out of the equation, you might have just thought, I'm going to buy this market and it would have shot up into profit. So not only do you need to keep everything simple because it's good for your mental ability, it's also better because it gives you a clearer indication of where the market's going to go next and you'll have less doubts in your ability. So as I previously said, we're going to want to keep this very simple. We don't want too much clutter on our screens because that will just confuse us and if we're confused, we're not making as much money. So what we're going to want to do is just adding a moving average and these are very good because it can help you get a nice easy directional bias and what we're going to do is we're going to change the length from 9 to a 50 
50-day moving average or a 50-period moving average. And essentially what this means is it will take the last 50 candles into account and then give you an average directional bias. The general rule when using a moving average is if it's below the moving average, you're always going to be looking for sells. Or if it's above the moving average, you're always going to be looking for buys. Now, this isn't to say if prices are below the moving average, you instantly sell, or if it's above, you instantly buy. You need more confluences than just if it's above buy, if it's below sell. So what you need to do is use market structure to get some refined entries so you can have tighter stop losses and higher risks to rewards. And that will be used in conjunction with the moving average to give you a higher probability outcome on any given trade that you guys decide to take. Now, ideally, when you're trading, what you want to use is three confluences. That is the main priority. But for the sake of this video, what we're going to be doing is only using two. Now, what you could do is if you're a little bit more advanced and know what you're doing is use a moving average crossover in conjunction with the break and retest strategy that I'm just about to show you. Or if you're a bit more of a beginner and not sure what you're doing as much, then just use this strategy and it will be definitely good enough to help you guys make money. So all you're going to want to do is identify key market structure levels. These are areas where price has interacted, where it's either pulled back, whether it's reversed, somewhere, some level where price has had some interaction and it's not done really perhaps what it should have done before. What I'm looking at here is a break of this area. So what we have is we have price is above the moving average. So we're instantly looking for buys. But now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want price to break that purple level and then come back down to retest it. The reason why the break and retest strategy works so well with the moving average is because if you've cleanly broken a zone and you've come back to retest it as a support zone, it's two confluences right there giving you such a high probability opportunity to make some money within this market. As you can see on screen, what I've just explained is exactly what I want to happen. I want it to push up, push down a little bit as a pullback and then break through that purple zone nice and cleanly and then come back down to retest it now what we do is when it comes back down to retest is we wait to see for rejection this is long pin bars this is long sort of dojis indicating that there's indecision and there's actually buyers waiting down in that zone the last thing we want to do is for price to come down into that zone and then just completely catapult through what we want to do is see price break cleanly through come back and retest it this way we can get refined entries and a higher risk to reward but what happens if the moving average is not above it's not below but it's going straight through the middle of the candlesticks or price action and in this case and in any market consolidation case we want to avoid it completely what tends to happen if you're new to forex is liquidity spikes smart money institutions all building on their positions and the way that they build on their positions and add to their huge positions is to stop you out because you're taking up liquidity that they need all of this and liquidity and smart money concepts will go over later on when we've all got a bit more knowledge but essentially what happens in a consolidated market is it's tightly compacted between a support and a resistance and it just bounces between to and from those zones and what happens is we get weird spikes so many strange things happens and this is just all sort of stuff that we want to avoid we don't want to just give money away we don't want to just lose money so if it's consolidating and it's not going in any clear direction we just want to absolutely avoid that market so that has been the video. I know that there are so many more details and things that I could have gone over, but that is the general idea that you want to take away when trading from your phone. If you haven't any questions, just leave them in the comment section below and I'll get right back to you. But if the moving average is above price, so if the candlesticks are here and the moving average is here, all you're going to want to do is be looking for buys. And then the same if it's below, if the, price, if the moving average is here, your candles are here, all you're going to be looking for is sales. And if your candlesticks are here 
and your moving average is going right through the middle. You don't want to trade that market. That is a consolidated market. Stay out of that. There is no directional bias. And what happens a lot in these consolidated markets is a lot of market manipulation, which I'll get onto in all of that. All will be covered on the channel. So if you are new, make sure you subscribe into the channel. If this did help you in any way, please leave a like. And if you still have questions on the topic, make sure you drop them down in the comment section below. But thank you all so much for watching. This is Luke, and I'm signing out. Peace. Diet. Now, there's a few things I want to say before I get into this video. One, this here, this is a weed lighter. I don't smoke weed, but I like to hold things when I do my commentaries. I don't know why. The next thing is this. This is my microphone. This is a sock. Now, you might be wondering, why is there a sock on my microphone? Well, normally I would use this, and that is called a pop filter. Now, when I'm doing these videos, it's a little bit hard for me to be in my normal set. And you would notice that I don't have my normal cameraman, which is my girlfriend. So, we are very bare bones in this video. We are using a sock as a pop filter, and we are using a bottle of Robertson's Fruit Creations to hold my phone up to record this video. But also, you might be thinking that my eyes are very inflamed. And yes, they are. One, because I got a shocking night's sleep last night, and two, because it's now hay fever season, and I suffer with probably the worst hay fever. So, Inflamed eyes, sock on a mic, big black bags, and a pop filter, that is now redundant.